All right, welcome to the webinar today. Uh, I have with me, my name is Scott Ellis. I'm a product marketing manager here at Onset. And I have Matt Rivers with me here, who's uh, one of our sales engineers. And we're going to take you uh, through both uh, the Hobo Mobile app as well as uh, look at some of the features uh, of the hardware product, the MX1101 temperature and humidity data logger. Uh, here's our overview. Again, uh, we'll dive into the demo here and we're definitely going to save some room for uh, questions at the end so feel free to type those in as we go here. Just really a quick overview before I turn this over to Matt who is Onset if you're not familiar with us. Uh, we're the leader in portable data loggers. We were actually founded in 1981. Uh, we have about 130 employees now. Uh, we do design and manufacture everything here on Cape Cod in Bourne, Massachusetts and uh, we've sold over two million data loggers and I can say uh, we're in a heat wave right now we actually just got above 32 degrees so <laughs> welcome to the Northeast uh, so without further ado here I'm gonna turn things over to Matt Rivers and he will take it from here good afternoon everybody thank you so much for joining us today my name is Matt Rivers and uh, I'm the sales engineer here for Onset and uh, we're gonna go through uh, our data logger, our MX1101, and the first screen that we pop up here, and I think we all feel this way, is does your, does your PC sometimes feel like an anchor? Well, yeah, it does. It just happens that way. And uh, we're hoping to take some of that away. You know, it's time to cut the cables uh, from the old traditional way of communicating with data loggers and uh, introduce something new and exciting uh, from onset. And uh, it doesn't require a computer. It doesn't require a USB cable. It doesn't require a hoboware. And internet is definitely not required for this product. So without further ado, let's talk a little bit more about our new Hobo mobile device, our MX1101 data logger. The way the MX1101 temperature relative humidity data logger works is through an app. Everything communicates via Bluetooth Smart. And uh, what it's basically doing is it's transmitting uh, the data from the data logger to an app on your Android phone and you have to be at about a hundred feet within the uh, the data logger itself for it to communicate back and forth. We're going to go through the app a, a little bit further here. Scott's going to go through a demo. Uh, but what it does is it allows you now using the Hobo mobile app to configure, start, and offload any of the data that's being recorded when in range. So you'll be able to use that app when you're in range of the data logger. And currently the data logger that we rolled out is just for temperature and relative humidity. So what's required for the MX1101 Temp RH data logger? Well, you've got to download the free Hobo mobile app. It is Android compatible as of the beginning of this year. I think probably, I think it was the end of February that we, well, it's still February now, the end of January, excuse me, uh, that we rolled out the Android app. And it has to be a, uh, you know, Android required 4.4, also AKA KitKat, and it's Bluetooth 4.0 compatibility. So let's talk a little bit more about the actual data logger itself. Again, new wireless communication via Bluetooth Smart, up to 100 feet line of sight communication. New, easy to deploy and offload using the free Hobo Mobile app. And again, we're talking about Android today, but this is already compatible using uh, Apple devices, Apple uh, iPhone 4S or greater, and iPads, and iTouches, etc. And all this information is on the website. So it does have a built-in audible alarm, and basically uh, it's for those people who put the data loggers out and they forget where they put them. You can actually beep the data logger now to find out where you left it or where you might have installed it. That's that new Find Me Pager feature. Another question that has come up quite a bit since we brought this product out is, hey, can anybody access my data from this data logger? Well, if you want them to, sure. If you want to put a password on it, you can password protect the data logger itself. The data logger can store up to 84,000 measurements of temperature and relative humidity. Uh, it has two user replaceable AAA batteries. The batteries typically last about a year. Uh, your temperature ranges, as you can see here from the specs, you can go from negative 20 degrees C to 70 degrees Celsius or negative 4 to 158 degrees Fahrenheit. And the relative humidity range is 0 to 99 percent RH in a non-condensing application your accuracy is plus minus 2% RH from about 20% to 80% RH. 
The great thing about the LCD screen is it's refreshing every 15 seconds and it's showing you whatever the current reading is on the temperature and relative humidity. It does have a flexible start and stop option on the data logger itself if you do enable it that way through the app. Uh, again, audible and visual high and low alarm thresholds can be set on the product itself. Uh, and it does have user upgradable firmware. So some of the applications that we've already seen the data logger used in, you know, whether it's a warehouse type application, museums, uh, HACCP monitoring, uh, could be healthcare, safety applications. But we're going to talk about a new application that uh, we just put out a nice little case study on here. And the challenge was basically tracking temp and humidity at a historic site. Uh, so the challenge basically is there was a uh, deterioration of a three foot thick limestone wall at a shrine at the Alamo. You've all heard of the Alamo, haven't you? So <laughs> one of the big problem was uh, they had to figure out a way to be able to track the data of, of the uh, RH and the temperature at this uh, location. So uh, efflorescence, and I think I said that properly, uh, plaster loss and crumbling surfaces were identified and they needed to determine and fix the underlying causes of that deterioration. What's causing the problem? So the solution was, because again, the Alamo is very old, we don't want to run a bunch of cables through a historic site, they decided to buy some of our MX1101 loggers and uh, put them in the certain areas where uh, they were having these issues. So, you know, just using a piece of uh, Velcro in some certain spots or a zip tie or magnetically, uh, you know, fastening this data logger, they were able to take, you know, data every three minutes of temperature relative humidity uh, and they would analyze it weekly. They'd download it just using their Hobo mobile app weekly. Uh, they also deployed a, a Hobo U30 system uh, just for comparisons of outside temperatures and inside environmental conditions. So the result, convenient and fast method for uh, monitoring temperature and relative humidity wirelessly. That's the key here, folks, wirelessly. Uh, the logger configuration and launch data offload uh, is all done through that Hobo mobile app. So, you know, literally, no wire connections, as long as they're in with 100 feet, they can get to what's going on. It's a very compact and small device, you can hide it. That was the key, they didn't want anything that was going to be sticking out and become an eyesore. So the conclusion from the data was basically to help you know, determine any of the actions to preserve that shrine at the Alamo. So they're working through the data now and uh, hopefully they'll have a nice uh, fix going forward. So what I'm going to do is we're going to run a poll real quick here. And uh, the question basically is, are you currently using Hobo data loggers? So we just shot it out. If you could just take a minute and answer the poll for us, we'd really appreciate it. This is the kind of information that really helps us uh, understand our market and also who's using our products. We're almost there. About 67% of the vote is in. Okay, and we're going to wrap this poll up and, and uh, we're going to close it right now. So we're going to post these results. As you can see here, you know, 65% of our audiences are using hobos, which is, which is pretty awesome. Although, you know, hey, we don't expect you to always use our products alone. That 12% that's out there that's not using our data loggers, that's okay. We're hoping to fix that. So at this point, I'm going to turn this back over to Scott. He's going to need a minute here. He's going to set up the uh, demo for our Hobo mobile uh, app communicating. <clears throat> Great, thanks Matt. Um, let me just get this going here. We've got this fancy technology where I am able to uh, basically connect the mobile phone wirelessly to my laptop so it just takes a second here so let me get this up and going and uh, we should be good to go here while I'm getting this connected I'm gonna throw up one more poll here while we're at it just to kinda kill a little bit of time uh, just interested in terms of uh, you know what are you using smart uh, devices out there do you are you currently using them um, which flavor do you use and uh, And if you don't have one, uh, you know, maybe we can, maybe this is your justification to get one. So, <laughs> uh, just hit play. Okay, good. I'm going to.
close up this poll here. Looks like we got a pretty 50-50 uh, split out there um, between Apple and Android, and obviously I would expect uh, you know a little more Android for this one. And for you 7% out there, here's your justification. So <laughs> let me hide this, and what I'm going to do now um, is bring up the screen sharing software here. So let me open up Hobo Mobile. And so this is the app. Um, as you can see here, uh, automatically it's going to start to show you some loggers that are within range. Um, we've got a bunch here at onset, so but I'll be working with a couple here. The navigation of the app is across the bottom. Uh, so you have what we call the Hobo screen, your data file screen, uh, there's settings and about. <clears throat> um, but I'll just come back to the hobo scene and we're going to go ahead and connect up to one of these loggers here. I've got this one as my test one. So basically I just tapped on, on a logger and it went out and connected to it. And as you can see here, um, basically uh, this is the connected scene. So you're now actively talking to the, to the logger. There's a few things you can do like page it. And if you heard that beep there, um, that's so if, you know, let's say it's hidden up in a ceiling, you don't know exactly where it is, you can go uh, find it. Um, you can click on the full status details. So if you have one of these guys deployed, you can actually go in and see what the current uh, configuration is, when was it last configured, what the logging interval was, and all that sort of good stuff. But what we will do now is take a step back and just uh, go ahead and configure these. Can everybody still hear me out there? Sorry, a question just came in. Yes, great, thank you, appreciate it. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and configure this here by tapping on the configure. Uh, it's warning me that it's already running, but we'll go ahead and configure it. So you can do things like uh, add a label. Uh, I'll just keep this as the serial number, but you can put whatever you'd like in here. Um, you can add it to a group if you so choose. Uh, so if you wanna, group some loggers together for data management, you can do that. Um, you can set your logging interval. So this is always kind of fun. You can just take the spinny thing and kind of move it up and down to set set your logging interval. We'll keep that in a minute. Um, in terms of when you want to start your data logger, uh, you can have it start at the next logging interval. You can have it start right now, a push button, or you can also do uh, what we call the delayed start on date and time. And in many cases, I do recommend using this if you're using multiple loggers. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it helps to uh, sync your data back together. Um, so if you're gonna combine everything into a spreadsheet or something like that. But for this demo, we'll just go ahead and start it now. Um, same with the stop logging options. There's a couple different options. Uh, you can have this so it basically never stops. It overwrites the oldest data. Um, you can have it stop with a push button. You can have it restart with a push button. Uh, you can have it stop on a particular uh, date and time or uh, after a particular period as well. So it gives you some flexibility there uh, depending upon uh, how long your deployment may be going. Uh, there's, Matt had mentioned alarms in here before and if you tap on uh, temperature, for example, what you can do is come in and then turn on uh, an upper and lower alarm and you can just move that slidey bar or you can actually uh, come in here and type something in as well. And we'll just hit done. We'll just set an upper one. Now once, once you've Come on, go away. There we go. All right, so once you have, uh, did that a take? So this is why you don't do demos. <laughs> All right, there we go. We use the slidey bar, you hit done. Hmm. Interesting. All right, look at that. Well, 
that's a bug for the software department. All right, uh, I, let me look into this. <laughs> I, uh, I believe I have the latest release, but let me double check on that. So technically, you're supposed to be able to set your alarms, and then uh, actually, uh, you you have the ability to then turn on the audible alarm as well. Um, and finally, uh, you come down into the logging mode, and you can have this log, and so it wakes up every minute and takes a snapshot reading. But you can actually set it, so let's say you want to do min, max, and average over that particular logging uh, interval. So you can have it uh, sample, let's say, every second, and then at that one minute, it will give you the max, min, and average, as well as what the snapshot reading was. So pretty straightforward to set this guy up. Um, come back to the configure screen, and in the upper right, you basically just hit start. And that's going to go ahead and send the information out to the logger. And it says that it's configured and that it is now uh, ready to, uh, well, it's actually recording. So um, you can read out the logger as well. Uh, I'll read this out real quick here, uh, just because there's probably only one uh, one measurement on here. But as you can see in the bottom, uh, the number one pops up. So every time that you download a, a, a bunch of loggers, uh, you will actually be able to, um, the, you know, then the count just continues to increase. So uh, what I'll do is go over to the data file scene. And yeah, that top graph there really didn't have any information in it because I just started the logger. But if we scroll down, you can see some of the other ones that I've downloaded. You can tap on any of these to get basically to the uh, the larger graph. And I'm just going to spin this here because it looks a little better this way. Um, and then from here, you can you know you can uh, zoom in and out by uh, basically pinching uh, with your finger and thumb. You can hold down your finger, and then it will actually pull up like a what we call a crosshair tool. So you can go through and see exactly the date and time and what those readings were. Um, now, in terms of sharing your data or getting your data uh, off of here, um, at the top, we have what's called a share button. And that's that box with the uh, arrow coming out the top. And I'll just turn this back here. You have uh, a couple different uh, file formats that you can send the data file as. Uh, the XLS, X, the CSV, the text, or what we call a Hoboware file. Um, so we do offer a, a desktop program called Hoboware. So if you want to do additional data analysis, you can use that. But in this particular case, I'll just send a CSV. And it just takes a couple seconds here to essentially uh, generate the file in the background. And then from here, um, we actually have a couple different options in terms of uh, what you want to do with your data at this point. I can either email it, I can push it up to Google Drive, um, and I believe on the Androids you can actually save them to the uh, save them to the phone here as a CSV, so then you can open it up in uh, an Excel type program. But you simply just uh, go in. I'll send this off to myself. And off goes the data. So pretty, pretty straightforward in terms of uh, uh, how you can share your data. There are, there are a couple things here. Um, the three little lines in the upper right-hand side, if you tap on that, um, as you can see, this logger actually did a lot more recording. Not to mess up the graph, we usually just initially show the temperature, the base temperature and humidity. But let's say if you're interested in dew point, you can select that. And then, uh, and then come back over. It will update the graph and now now plot the the dew point for you as well. So we'll just go ahead and get back out of this. Um, there's a couple things here uh, in the about scene, and I do see that we have a, a question regarding um, the documentation. This is on our website, but we also do have uh, the documentation uh, here. Actually, it pushes you out to our website. So, um, and then you can uh, download uh, all the manuals there. And if you haven't heard my voice enough, you can actually go through uh, some of these videos here as, as well to check that out. So let me just uh, 
go back over here. And then uh, finally, there's some settings here where you can change the units from US to, uh, to SI um, if you want to look at this in centigrade. And uh, for troubleshooting, um, sometimes tech support may have you enable the logs. So that, that's something if, if uh, actually I'll be able to use those to troubleshoot what happened here. Um, and then uh, there'll be more features coming as, as the time, time goes along here, and they'll actually be uh, stored in this settings area. So let me go ahead, and that's basically a demo of Hobo Mobile. Oh, actually, one other thing I wanted to point out here, and in this scene right here, um, as you can see, that second logger down, uh, the one that ends in 608, you can see that it's locked. So I actually can't connect to that one, and you can also see that it um, it had an alarm and it's be and it's been triggered. So really, a quick way without connecting to all of these loggers, uh, you can go in and um, see right within the hobo scene if something uh, is in an alarm state. And uh, I'll just go ahead and try to tap onto it now. As Matt referenced before, I don't know the password to this one, so I actually can't get to this particular logger. So you know, if, if you're in a in a place where um, well, around here is a prime example where we have a lot of people working with these in a small area, and a lot of us put the passwords on there, so other folks can't get to them essentially. So uh, what I will do here is let me get out of this software here. Uh, bear with me here, just one second. And what we're going to do now is uh, let me go ahead and pull this back up. And basically, we're going to kind of wrap this up here. That's really the overview of um, of Hobo Mobile and uh, the MX uh, data loggers and. I see we've got a bunch of questions up here, so we're going to go ahead and dive into those. Um, so I'll leave this contact information up here, and let me just take a look. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to, to stress in terms of um, things that, that I've learned since over the past month uh, that this has been out on the market for Android um, is that not all Android devices are able to upgrade to 4.4. Uh, uh, which is known as KitKat, uh, the operating system. So if if you do have an older device, um, uh, you, you should try to update it to 4.4 because uh, we actually will not run on anything below that. And I do know that some of the phones or the devices are now getting pushed uh, 5.0, which I believe is Lollipop, I believe, and uh, the app is compatible with that. So if you do have new devices or you've updated them, um, and then the other thing to stress is just make sure the, uh, that you have uh, Bluetooth 4.0. Um, it's different than your normal uh, headset Bluetooth, which actually runs on 3.0 or less than that. So uh, let's take a look at, at some of these questions. Uh, iOS, yes, this is available for iOS. Uh, again, you need, just need to make sure your device uh, runs Bluetooth 4.0. Um, but it's compatible with the with the uh, the current operating systems that are out there. Um, will this work through wood, sheetrock walls, concrete walls, any of that sort of good stuff, Daniel? That's an excellent question. Um, it, it does, but I'll admit um, the range does come down. Uh, so uh, effectively, I think I've communicated as far as about 125 feet line of sight. Um, but in terms of as you start throwing walls in the way, um, you know, for example, I sat out in my driveway, um, you know, and I was able to communicate to some of them in the house, uh, but the one in the basement, I actually couldn't. I had to come up to the front step. Uh, so, you know, depending upon what you're trying to get through, um, you know, your range will, will definitely decrease. Um, one of the nice things is that it, the app does show you uh, the number of bars, so the signal strength essentially that you're getting. So if you, uh, you're not able to communicate to it, you just kind of uh, move closer there. Uh, in, in terms of outdoor technology, um, 
this this particular unit is not weatherproof. So um, you know, we, we don't really recommend this being deployed outside. Um, there's many questions here about uh, other measurements. Um, it's it's certainly something uh, you know that that we are looking at. This is our first um, Bluetooth logger that that we came out with uh, essentially uh, late late um, summer, I believe. So uh, we're in the process of, of looking at other uh, measurements coming out, and um, you know we've been doing some testing, uh, you know, outside in terms of communications and all that sort of stuff. So we really see this as being a, a good communication method um, moving forward. So. Stay tuned. Um, we we definitely plan on on rolling this out into other loggers. Um, you won't be able to retrofit uh, your older loggers. So um, the the technology and the the circuitry has changed enough that um, you know we do essentially have to create uh, new products there. So stay tuned there definitely. Um, in terms of storage capacity. Uh, these these actually have twice as much memory as uh, the U12 loggers, Jean-Luc. Um, so at a two-minute uh, recording interval, it'll be twice as long uh, as that as the um, uh, as the U12 units. Uh, Franklin, I see you have the UX100003. Uh, this is essentially the Bluetooth version of it, the the MX uh, data logger. So. Um, this has uh, very similar uh, characteristics. It does use a, a bit of a different RH sensor, but uh, essentially um, you're you're getting the same thing as the the UX one hundred o three. There's just no um, there's no USB port on this guy. Uh, so <laughs> all right, here's a good question, Manuel. Uh, if you put it into a weatherproof box, can it withstand negative fifteen centigrade? Um, it's rated down to uh, negative 20. So, and I, actually, what I ended up doing um, over this cold spell that we've had here in the Northeast, uh, this lovely January and February that we've had, um, I took this and I, I did put it outside. Um, you're not going to get valid humidity readings because essentially uh, you're just measuring the, you know, within that. Um, so if you want to do temperatures, yeah, you can. But again, I would stress that this is uh, it's an indoor product. It can't get wet. Um, Ziploc baggie or something like that is definitely the, uh, the way to go. You know, another thing you want to consider with that as well is anytime you put something like this in its own enclosure, uh, this is a non-condensing data logger. You're going to create possibly a or potentially a microclimate with inside that enclosure. So if the board gets wet, it could ruin the actual data logger itself. So that's something you want to be concerned with. Um, also, I just wanted to throw that in there. Great, thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Um, let me just take a look at some of these other questions here. Uh, how does the no, I got it. Uh, how's how's the logger get its location? Um, when you go to when you go to launch the logger or configure it and start it, um, you will be asked by the Hobo Mobile app um, if you want to use your location essentially. So it's it's uh, using whatever that native location thing is within all the phones, and so that essentially gets stored. Um, in the the data file, so wherever the the logger is configured and started, uh, that that gets um, uh, that that then gets put into your data file there. So, uh, one thing on the alarms, and and that's actually uh, a, g a good question here. Um, in terms of the alarms. Um, you will see a visual representation on the on the display on the physical unit itself, and you can enable the audible alarm, which will beep. So it'll give you some sort of indication um, if somebody was to walk up to this logger without having the app. Now the question is 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 when the app is in range, um, will the app pop up and notify you? Uh, it won't at this point, so you actually do have to go into the the hobo scene and and take a look, and you'll see that alarm icon. Uh, you know, if something's gone outside of range, 
Um, but I believe that that will be an enhancement that we'll be looking at down the road. Um, so I'll certainly, uh, you know, get that into our, our new product requests here. So. Let's see here. Uh, battery life. Um, so good, good question. Uh, you know, battery life, how long do we really expect this to last? Um, I've, you know, and in terms of it's a, uh, you know, putting this into a museum case, for example, and you don't want to open it up, um, I would expect if you're doing about a, a let's say, a 15-minute logging rate, uh, you're certainly going to get a year. Um, beyond that, it, it really depends upon how many times you connect to this. So really the, the power issue is when you're communicating to the, uh, to the unit and it's transferring information back and forth. So if you're communicating uh, to it <clears throat> a lot, you could, you, you could eat into that, that battery life. Um, but you know, on the flip side, if it just sat there and let's say you're downloading it once a month, you're recording every 15 minutes, I certainly expect you to get a year and probably longer. Uh, I'm not sure exactly, um, you know, how how long that would last. Um, I have one at my house actually right now. The product hasn't been out for a, a full year, so um, you know, I. I would expect that you're going to get, based upon some of our other loggers that I, I have only downloaded once over the course of a year, um, the, UX, uh, the UX100 is actually a good example, and I've had it run for about 18 months. But again, we spec the battery life at, at a year, so that's kind of what we're expecting to see. Uh, is the app free? Yes, it certainly is, uh, both for Android and Apple. So... Um, Uh, okay. Um, yeah, if, if uh, let's see what we got here. Battery life, we did that. Uh, good question by Mark. Um, do, do you have a way to get the data if Bluetooth is not working? Um, no. Uh, Bluetooth is your only method um, to, to be able to get the data off. Um, at least out in the field. Now, if something tragically goes wrong, you know, with this data logger, um, the, our tech support folks here and our repair department certainly have a way uh, to be able to get the the recorded data off there. Um, but you know, I've 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 been working with these units now, um, geez, since last April, if not longer, and uh, have yet to have any informations here uh, whatsoever. Um, Dick, yes, this uh, presentation will definitely be on the website. We usually post these to YouTube, so uh, you can check that out there. Um, uh, can anybody, and I think I touched on this earlier, but uh, can anybody access uh, the data logger or control it? Um, so if, if you haven't enabled a password, um, on the logger, yeah, technically somebody who has the Hobo Mobile app could uh, go in and access that logger. So, um, you know, the case of the Alamo there, <laughs> actually, um, you could technically walk in there. Now, I know that they've set passwords just so, you know, that nobody could access it, that. But that's definitely um, one of those things there uh, that, um, uh, that you'll want to set. So, uh, just click. so um, an another good question: Does this have an auto setting to send an email at an interval? So it's, it's that's a great question, and, and I can tell you that those are some things that we're working on. Um, this first release, the 1.0 release, was essentially give you the ability to communicate to the to one logger um, and you know set it up and and all that sort of stuff, read it out and share one data file. Um, what we've done right now, uh, at least on the Apple side, we're at version 1.1. 1 
Um, and the Android side, we've actually in development and we're uh, aggressively pushing towards uh, version 1.2. And what that will be is what we call uh, time-saving features. So this is going to allow you to connect to multiple loggers. Um, download from multiple loggers, share multiple files, uh, set up one configuration, and then configure all the rest of those, you know, let's say you got 50 loggers, you then configure those all the same way. So those are some features that, that we're working on. Um, you, you'll, you'll see definitely that, you know, when you use these units, it, as soon as you're using, you know, let's say 10, um, some of these features that, that I've been talking about here are going to be uh, key. So. Um, we expect uh, we expect the the Apple version actually to be out um, probably mid March, and then the follow on Android um, will will be coming out in probably an April May time frame uh, with those features. So definitely stay tuned. Um, and uh, you know if you have the auto updates set on your phone, that will come out. But we'll certainly be sending out information um, you know once that happens there. So. Uh, it looks like I've probably touched on all the questions here. Uh, another couple other questions here, actually. So um, the the question of being able to communicate to a laptop or a desktop computer that that has uh, Bluetooth 4.0, it's actually uh, you know we're we're starting to see the the um, the manufacturers. Uh, start to do that. So at this point we don't have the ability to directly connect to a computer. Um, it's something that's actually come up a little more than than I would have expected. But uh you know that 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 may be something that uh that we could be looking at down the road. Um, uh, Jim asked, could you develop a, a Bluetooth uh interface to connect to any USB logger? Um, we did look at that. Um, Honestly, it was going to get messy, uh, at, at least when we started looking at the technology there. So um, we're not looking to do anything along those lines. Um, any plans to mesh network these guys together? Mark, that's a great question. Uh, as Bluetooth 4.0 stands, that technology is not there. Um, but we did see uh, 4.2 just come out, and that appears to be... Uh, it may have those capabilities, but you know, really, at the end of the day, we've got to wait for some of these folks that develop all these chips to to actually start using that stuff. So, at some point, maybe um, that would be something that uh, you know that we could see. But it's it's uh, unfortunately, it's not not something that uh, that we have today. Uh, a couple questions here about using these in uh, greenhouses. So I, I tentatively say maybe. <laughs> how's, how's that? Um, the logger can't get wet. So, and I, I do know from my own experience, not all greenhouses get to a condensing environment. Um, so if you know, if you don't have water dripping from the roof or or Depending upon how you uh, uh, feed the plants or spray water, you know th th that's something that you're going to want to look into. Uh, you know, again, you, you're not going to want to put uh, these, this product in a place where um, you may have sprinklers coming on from the roof. Uh, you know, I know in certain cases they, they, in other cases, they'll water from the from the bottom or have troughs that that push uh, push things through. So, you know, in a case like that. That, that might work, but uh, so uh, how about a tentative maybe? Um, um, David, I see, I see you have a question up here, and, and that's that's come up a couple of different times. David, can you reach out to me directly? Uh, my email name, my email's on the screen there. Um, that reach out to me uh, or give me a buzz or something and uh, obviously not right now but uh, <laughs> um, I'd reach out to me and, and we should uh, we should talk a little more in more detail so 
I think that's probably got all the questions here. Uh, I want to thank everybody for, for sticking around here. I know we're kind of cutting this a little short than an hour, so I'll let you guys back on to doing other things. But, uh, you know, definitely thank you if, if you have any questions, um, you know, in terms of uh, purchasing the product. Matt Rivers is our sales engineer, and we'll definitely want you talking to him. And again, thanks, Scott, for everything today. This has been a great presentation. Uh, as a, a common practice here, what we're planning on doing is our application folks will start reaching out to everybody who attended the uh, webinar uh, as soon as after the webinar is ending. Uh, so if there are questions that didn't get answered here, realize we're going to give you a call and hopefully be able to answer those questions for you. And again, our email addresses are up here, and uh, you know we'll be able to... Uh, you know, answer those questions for you. And then one last question, it says, will it be posted online? And that's from Dale. Yes, Dale, we will get this out to the web. Uh, most likely, I think it'll go out through YouTube. And then we'll do an email follow-up with the link to it as well. So uh, without any further ado, thank you so much for attending. And uh, we will speak with you soon. Bye-bye.